what can I say? Except, I was right. I told you this was going to happen. And I take no joy in gloating, but... I am going to gloat because, well, I was right. I said months ago, at the frenzy of the Russian collusion investigation, which then became the Ukraine thing, which then became whatever the next thing, the Democrats' only hope, their only real plan, their only real strategy to be able to get Donald Trump out of office that would stand any chance and could very well be successful, was a manufactured recession. I told you, I told you, I told you. It goes back to Bill Maher being giddy on his own show saying, hey, I don't want people to suffer, but we got to get rid of this president, and if that means the economy needs to tank, well, oh well, we need a recession. You had Democrats and even the lying legacy corporate corrupt mainstream media hinting at the bursting of the bubble, that the stock market was doing far too well. It was going to crash. They floated stories like that. The cycles would run about a week, and then they would disappear, and then a couple of months would go by, and they'd recirculate the same line. And I would come on here, and I would tell you they're going to create, they're going to manufacture a recession. And everyone, including the great Rush Limbaugh, said, it's not possible. The economy is far too strong. There's no way that a Chuck Schumer and a Nancy Pelosi and the rest of those Dems on the Hill could pull something like that off. Enter the coronavirus. Oh, oh, is it all beginning to click now? Is it all beginning to make sense now? That maybe Pastor Marty, pastor and political commentator, isn't a crackpot. He actually does know what he's talking about. Gee. <laughs> There's a reason I have not been talking about the coronavirus on here. That's, that's on purpose. Haven't done it here. Haven't done it on my radio show. Just haven't done it. Why? Because it's a manufactured crisis. Now, I don't really know what happened in China to get this thing rolling. Uh, I'm not going to, you know throw out wild conspiracy theories, except this. Uh, something, somewhere, they were working on something, and this thing got out. And I don't think the Chinese ever intended for it to get out in their own country and do what it did. I've heard some of the conspiracy guys saying, well, you know, they got to thin out their population over there. Well, yeah, I... Mm. But it's obvious that they lost control of it. And, you know, when, when the powers that be, the ruling powers, begin to worry and fret that they might be affected by it, it didn't go according to plan. And I am certain that China has not been um, forthright or honest as to how well they have it controlled or not controlled. That said, right now I am watching conservatives. I am listening to so-called conservative voices like Glenn Crybaby Beck who's really not a conservative. Uh, I'm, I'm listening to conservatives, and even now, faux pas news, formerly known as Fox News, has had to get on the corona bandwagon. And, I mean, I understand that the conservatives are trying to reset the narrative. You know, they're bringing on the health officials in their panels and talking about this is not as bad as this plague, that plague, this virus outbreak. Why, apparently, a few years ago, there was a... Caribbean strand of this coronavirus that was a hundred times more deadly and killed far more people and nobody whimpered about it, nobody said a thing about it, there wasn't even any travel warnings about it, yada yada yada, etc, etc, etc. That's all a moot point. When the mass media can create the mass narrative which then creates the mass angst, worry, concern, then all of a sudden you've got a problem and you can't just simply respond like we're back in school, pay attention boys and girls, and watch this documentary so that you know exactly what's happening. Do you remember being in school and when the teacher would roll in the film projector? Man, 
Uh, you know, un unless she was, like, going to show a, a mainstream movie from the theater, which obviously she wasn't. It was going to be something educational. Baby, that was nap time. That was not pay attention time. That was goof off and try to make time with the girl sitting next to you time. That's what the movie projector meant. Right now, Americans are not paying attention to the facts on this. They're listening to the narrative. And the coronavirus is now magically the Trump virus. We have factors happening that in China now, complete factories and cities are shut down and under quarantine. By the way, could China have allowed this to get out? Not to necessarily decimate their own population, but was this their little fight back to the trade war? You know, make their people so sick they couldn't go to work, they couldn't produce the goods that America... Thanks to Jim Acotta, and thanks to George W. Bush and Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, we have become more and more dependent upon Chinese manufacturing. The fact that the Chinese manufacture 85% of our medication, our meds, made in China. So much of what we use on a daily basis made in China. So much of our technology invented here, designed here, created here, perfected here, rolling off yin-yang assembly lines. And now all of a sudden, we're vulnerable. I believe, number one, the president has this well in hand. Vice President Pence oversaw two major viral outbreaks in the state of Indiana while he was governor and he brought the state through in flying colors. That's why Mike Pence has been tagged to head this up. Mike Pence and the medical community, they are on this. In fact, they actually had to go before Congress this week to testify that no, President Trump had not issued a gag order. This virus is not anywhere near as lethal, deadly, as they want to make it to be. But even faux pas news, it's global. There's two cases of it now in Mexico. Oh, by the way, by the way, the Democrats on the one hand want us to believe that this is the next black plague and you're going to die thanks to Donald Trump and not being prepared. But see, the Democrats really don't believe that. And they really don't care. Because if they did... They would be supporting the president right now, wouldn't they, in closing the border? So let me get this straight. The coronavirus is so deadly, you just walking outside your house right now could be susceptible and vulnerable. So the president's got to do something, and even witness protection Romney has said he's not done enough, and he hasn't raised enough money. Well, um, Mitt, how big is it? What's involved, and what's it going to cost? See, you don't know either, Dillweed. Go away. Go back to Utah. You know, your your state will let you have four or five more wives because apparently you're bored with the one you've got, which is why you're running around Capitol Hill pretending to be a senator when what you're really there to do is run interference against Donald Trump and somehow let the lying legacy corporate corrupt mainstream media and the Democrats say nice things about you again. You're such a stand-up guy, Mitt. Not. So just go away. Donald Trump is a proven problem solver. Just look at what's happened in our country. The economy's rocking and rolling. He's brought manufacturing back. You don't think that he understands? It doesn't matter whether or not he himself is a scientist and, and gets all the, 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 the medical, biological aspects of this. Donald Trump, by nature, it's who he is. He's a problem solver. How does he solve problems? He assembles great teams. Unlike the Barack Obamases, unlike the Bill Clintons and even the George W. Bushes, who just gather up their donor pals and give them impressive titles and great salaries. No, Donald Trump, and this is why sometimes we have shaken our heads wondering, why are some of these people that hate him part of his... Because Donald Trump puts together people that know what they're doing and know how to win. Unfortunately, some of them weren't satisfied with just being on the winning team and actually getting things done. They used it as a political opportunity to hurt the president. That's sad, but that's on them. In this case, 
the president right now isn't worried about if it's a Democrat or Republican, a Libertarian, a Unitarian. If you are in the medical profession and you know how to get a grip on this, get a handle on it and kill it and end it here stateside, you're in. And the president has assembled a great team. They're out there trying to reset the narrative. But again, again, the media wants this. They're salivating. They've been talking openly. This is it. It's the Democrats' chance. And this is why Chuck E. Cheese Schumer and Nancy Botox Pelosi are dragging their feet and they're not really doing anything. They're not really empowering the president to give him just a, a carte blanche, take care of this. No, 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 no. They want the issue. And they do want there to be an outbreak here. And they want the panic of, we're going to get sick. And they want the fact that now we don't have goods that we need. That's going to create, what's the word, boys and girls? Come on, it's right on the tip of your tongue. Recession. Look what's happening on Wall Street. A lot of you say, well, I'm not really invested in Wall Street. Well, if you got a 401k, you are. But you are invested in Wall Street. Because as Wall Street goes, the rest of our economy goes. Manufacturers become nervous about expanding their product line. They become nervous about, you know, extending employee hours. They start thinking things like layoffs, etc., etc., etc. You see how this all trickles down? Do you understand why the media and the Democrats are now pushing this like the bubonic plague? It's the takeout of Donald Trump. It's the Trump virus. Again, you could call this more election rigging. The manufactured recession, all the things that I have talked about with you. As I've told you, like the byline of my radio show, this is not talk radio, this is thought radio. It's radio for thinking people. You have to think past the headline. You have to think past the reactionary sound blips, sound clips, and news bites that the media wants to spoon feed you. And that even conservatives like Glenn Beck is out there, you know, selling his end of the world um, food. It's got a 45 year shelf life. It was great. I normally don't listen to Glenn Beck, but I happened to be in a car Friday that, you know, didn't have Sirius XM or, you know, had like got in like one AM station, happened to be the one Beck was on. And uh, he had Bill O'Reilly on as his Friday guest, apparently. And Bill is going on and on like, yeah, be informed, be concerned, but don't be in a panic. And of course, as soon as O'Reilly got off the air, Beck starts in, well, I'm not in a panic, but here comes the panic. You know, he's hawking gold, because after all, you know, you're not going to be able to buy anything with paper money during the corona scare, and you got to buy the end of the world food supply. So, you know, Glenn Beck is what he is. He talks conservative, and what he really is, he's like a TV evangelist in the evangelical community. See, TV evangelists, they say enough of the Christian things that it dupes in a lot of Christian people to fork over their money. But they themselves, off camera, they are living lives wilder than Hollywood movie moguls. Glenn Beck talks that conservative lingo because that's where he makes his money. And then he just gets to come on like a modern snake oil salesman and sell you crap. Oh, I'm sorry, did you just re-up your subscription to The Blaze? <laughs> Good night. And by the way, I used to really love Mark Levin, but when he partnered up with Glenn Beck, and I don't care that he just wanted access to Glenn's subscription base on that. That said, I told you, I told you, I told you, manufactured recession, here it comes in the coronavirus. Now, what we can't do right now is, is try to just endlessly, we're going to educate the people on what this really is and what it isn't, and we're going to help the president. No, you got to do this one person at a time. You have to go to your friends and tell them, calm down. Ask them some simple questions. Do you actually know anyone that has this? You know, then again, we could all be being lied and duped. Here comes another conspiracy theory. We could all be being lied to. Do we really know? Have you been to China to see it with your own eyes what's going on?
it's there, there, there's a problem. In this country, we have what we need to contain it, to control it, to not die from it. Do what you would do during any type of viral outbreak. Wash your hands, take care of yourself, clean up. Don't allow germs to fester and foster and just do what you have to do. But talk to people and tell your friends, neighbors, and relatives, calm down. Because I do believe by the time we really get rolling into spring, all of a sudden it'll be Corona what? It's the Democrats' latest craze to try to take out this president. Calm down, breathe, count to 10, it's going to be okay. But if it keeps being dragged out and conservatives get caught up in it, you are going to do the thing that you said you didn't want to see happen. You will help create the recession. How do you keep from creating a recession? Spend, make money, expand your business. Hey, that's it for today's rant. Thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate you tuning my way, telling your friends about it. Make sure you give us a big thumbs up, share this video anywhere and everywhere, and let's help educate people without going into a boring documentary presentation. That said, check your subscription. Make sure you're still subscribed. If you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Smack the bell so that you will allegedly get notification of my rants. YouTube's not only really good about that. Make sure you've clicked the word all so that you get all the notification of all of my rants. Have a great weekend.